Dalgleish's wife, Jean, has died in childbirth. He is at Hoggart's laboratory investigating the murder of Edwin Lorimer. On the eve of the murder, Lorimer quarrelled with his colleague, Paul Middlemas. Oh, look, if you can't make it in bed with Howarth's sister, if she isn't finding you up to it, don't take it out on the rest of us, OK? You... how dare you... Lorimer refused his cousin, Angela Foley, alone to buy the cottage she shares with her friend Stella Mawson. Oh, he was vile, sanctimonious, said I shouldn't be lying getting anything. He said he might be acquiring new obligations very soon. Obligations? Did he mean marriage? I don't know. Oh, no, that's too ridiculous. That desiccated prude. He didn't actually say marriage, Star. What else will automatically set aside an existing will? Well, he said he'd have to reconsider it anyway. I won't let him treat you like that. <coughs> Tell me something. Most nights he works late at the labs, doesn't he? My aim is to complete inquiries as soon as I reasonably can, so the laboratory can get back to work. Now, you can help me by completing brief statements of your whereabouts yesterday evening between the hours of, say, six o'clock and midnight, okay? Thank you. I do appreciate your cooperation and, indeed, uh, your patience. Thank you. Oh, he's quite a surprise. In what way? He's a poet. He's quite well known. Is he any good as a poet? Well, my friend Stella thinks so. She should know. Yes, of course. Check out all the usual things. Tower marks, etc. Walls, window frames, scuff tampered with by someone climbing in or out. That sort of thing, okay? Good. Now, who needed to get here before Mrs. Bibble, and therefore had to delay him? And why tear pages out of a notebook? Sergeant Reynolds, ask Inspector Doyle to report to me the minute he gets back, will you? Yes, sir. That's one of my dust sheets. Yes, it came from your linen cupboard. And you covered the body with it? Yes. You got a cheek, young man. Thank you. Ah, Mrs. Bidwell. Thank you for your help. Now, would you say that Dr. Lorimer was popular with the rest of the staff? Him? Mm. No, never. Too fussy for his own good. And he got worse recently. Nervy, you know. No, not popular. I'd like you to tell me about the phone. you heard about all that unpleasantness yesterday. No, perhaps you tell me. Well, that started at dinner time. Dr. L came down to reception. Had a row with that funny doctor, Dr. Kerrison's. They was waiting for their dad. He was given a lecture. Dr. L said the lab was no place for kids and he pushes her out the door. Did she screech? Really? You ask Inspector Blakelock. And you saw this yourself? Just the end of it. Later on... No, that's all right, Mrs. Pibble. I've got the picture. About the phone call. Oh, ah. Well, what about that? Some people have got a nerve. Anyway, I went over to Akerwood, that's the Howard's house, and Miss Howard weren't there, so that can't have been her what rang, can it? Well, that's of course she rang from London. Oh. Hmm. Now, I want you to show me the rounds. Hey. Eh? Well, what do you do from the moment you get in every morning? Well, 
That's ever so ordinary. Well, not to us, is Besides, this morning I didn't do it, did I? That's right. You're making up for it now. So you took your mother-in-law to the bus stop. There's nothing criminal in that. Unless, of course, she never caught the bus. I can't believe that he's really dead. I feel a bit daft pretending. I assure you we're not laughing. Now, where do you start? Well, I'll go straight upstairs and do the first floor toilets before the people arrive. Well, we'd better go up again. Oh, there's something else you ought to know. Really? He was always looking over my shoulder. Even now. Oh, for heaven's sake, Cliff, we haven't got the KGB with us, or even the FBI. He got his handkerchief up to his nose, and Mr. Middlemas was turkey red. And what were they quarrelling with? Well, that was something to do with Dr. Lorimer and a lady. But most of the time, that was talking about Mr. Bradley. He was standing in that room there. I see. Senior staff. It was more like kids knocking each other about. That's not the sort of thing we're used to. Um, these washrooms, are they? That's right. Which do you do first? Ladies, right. over here. Is this how you'd expect to find it? No better, no worse. You cleaned in here yesterday, you said? Of course I did. Hmm. When I clean, I clean. What's that there, the laundry basket? That's right. Is that your responsibility? Oh, ah. I'll do it. Who's over on time? That's Miss Easterbrooks. There's her initials. Mm -hmm. Oh, she spilled her tea yesterday by the look of it. Right. Do you have a look at the men's washroom? That's over here. So at least Miss Easterbrook knew that Mrs. Bibwell would have to go to the biology lab early to put out a clean coat for her. Well? Much as usual. Basket simply. That's funny. What's that? It's gone. What's gone? Mr. Middlemas White Coat. Cool. One with the brass buttons. It's not here either. So, where is it? Why would you expect to find it in the laundry basket? Because of the blood. Hmm. Dr. Lorimer's nose bled all over that coat. Well, someone stole it. Where do you go from now? Dr. Hearth's office. Mm -hmm. Not that it ever need much. He's ever so tidy. Not like old Dr. Mack. Yes, I've already him. seen the director's office. Right, thank you, Mrs. Bidwell. Come on. I'll see Middlemas next. Sir. Hold you on a minute. I know you have to be cautious, but if I were you, I'd ask Dr. Howarth a thing or two. He sneaked out to the show halfway through. Show? What show? Village show last night. He only came to look matey. You could tell he hated it. I see. Thank you very much, Mrs. Bidwell. You've been very helpful. I'll just get my bucket. Don't worry about your bucket, Mrs. Middlebus is waiting. Come in, John, will you? Someone's vomited into this basin. He or she cleaned it up, but not well enough. And, John, someone could get out that window. But why bother? If you were a member of staff, you'd know that Arma had the keys on him. But if it were an outsider, it would account for the lock front door and the alarm system being intact. Mm -hmm. 
Well, the murderer may have got out of this window, sir. But I don't think he came in this way. Why? It's a hell of a climb. Although, if it were an outsider, Lorimer could have let him in. Hmm. Some security system. Oh, yes. And you'll check out the village show, will you? Yes, sir. And John, quick as you can with that. Ah, oh, Mr. Middlemas. Oh. Thank you for your statement. Mm. Tell me, what happened between you and Dr. Lorimer yesterday? Uh, you mean my version as opposed to the gospel according to Mrs. B? I mean the truth as opposed to speculation, Mr. Middlemas. Yes, well, I can't say that I'm proud of it. Damn silly, really. Uh, well, I was at work. The door was open. It gets rather stuffy up here on hot days. I heard, saw... Laurie might come out of the washroom. I had a private matter I wanted to discuss with him, so I asked him in. Unfortunately, it escalated. He struck out at me, and in reaction, more by luck than judgment, I, uh, well, I hit him on the nose. He bled spectacularly all over my overall. I apologised, and that was that. Not entirely edifying, I agree. Hmm. Are you the only person here who wears an overall with brass buttons? What? Oh, that, yes, I'm rather fond of it. It belonged to my father. He was a naval dentist. Oh. Hey, you can't do this. Oh, no, let's see. Hey, you, what do you think you're doing? Where is he, Take it easy. Look, let me through. Take it easy. He's up there, isn't he? Let me through. Take it easy. It's all right, I'm here. Well, what is it, Mr. Bradley? You think I did it, don't you? I think you did what? They've told you. Oh, yes, they all think I did it. Oh, Clifford, Mr. Middlemass. Just keep it out of this, will you? All right. Excuse me, would you go back inside the library? Constable, close the door. Stay in front of it. John, come here. Join Middlemass. Ask him what the private matter was he was discussing with Lorimer. Yes, sir. Right, Mr. Bradley, come with me. Thank you. Let's go through, Mr. Bradley. Thank you, Now, what? Yes. The chalk must look ridiculous, don't they? By now, he'll be on a slab or in a refrigerator. Well, he hated me. I hated him. What are you telling me? I didn't kill him. I couldn't kill anything or anyone. You can't accuse I me know. of... I know. I haven't cautioned you, have I? Well, we'll talk about your motives later. What I want to know from you at the moment is something much duller than that. Facts. Ordinary, homely facts, like what you had for supper last night. That's not a very difficult question, is it? Joy here? No. We're just the bloody leg man. Aren't we, Alan? Uh-huh. As always. What do you reckon? Inspector Doyle? Did you manage to contact Mr. Bidwell? Him and his tractor were in the middle of nowhere. That's why it took you so long. Well, what do you say? The uh, witness confirmed it was a woman who telephoned. He didn't know who. 0650 thereabouts. 
And he couldn't remember if his wife was to go or come to Dr. Howard's house. Hmm. Did you ask him if he thought the voice was muffled or distorted in any way? Perhaps a man pretending to be a woman? No, he'd have reckoned it a balmy question. It isn't. Well, you can ask him at the station. I assume you told him to report at the station, make a formal statement? Of course. Good. Now, look, I want a story checked. It concerns Mr. Middlemas's evidence. Yep, that's it, George. Photographer and the Gobbins will take a cast. Receiving you. Out. What's this? Tire marks, sir. Front axle, treads not compatible. They're fairly fresh. They could be from last night. Good. Then we may be able to identify the vehicle, will not If you come up with anything, contact me through Guy's Marsh, OK? Right, sir. Afternoon. Police? Yes, uh, Chief Superintendent Doug, please. Inspector Massingham. Thank you. Winifred Swaffield. Come Thank along you. in. Thank you. The old gentleman's upstairs changing. Ah. Well, I told him there was absolutely no need, but there. Go along in. That's right. Ah, Constable Davies. Now, he is here to see that nobody goes into Dr. Lorimer's room and to see that nobody bothers old Mr. Mm. Lorimer. Well, we've only had one report us over, and I soon told him... Yes, I'm sure you did, Mrs. Swaffield. Everything all right, is yes, it? Sir. OK, carry on. You're the vicar's wife, aren't you? Of course. Yes. Didn't I say? <laughs> Simon's down with a fluid tummy. And so you didn't I thought... want Mr. Lorimer to catch it? Quite. Mm. Yes, well, when people are in a low state, shock. They are especially susceptible, mm. aren't they? Come along, Mr. Lorimer. Good afternoon, sir. Mm. Mm. Yeah, she made soup for me, lunch. Carrot soup. Edwin, he knows I don't like carrots. And soup or anything else. He speaks as though his son were still alive. But he knows he isn't, really. Yes, I understand, believe me. Good job. But you mustn't think he's senile. Just rather muddled, you know. Thank you, Mrs. Swaffield. Well, I'll go and finish things off in the kitchen. Thank you. I told her I didn't eat at, at midday, but she didn't listen. Well, the, the police are here. Yes, sir. What's your rank? Chief Superintendent. Um, maybe talk? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yes, he was a good son to me, he was. Well, go on, far away. Far away. First of all, I'm very sorry about your son. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, sir. Mm. Time was we were out of touch when he was at college, but since I've been alone, he's taken care of me. <clears throat> Have you any idea why somebody should have wanted to kill him? No. no he, I mean, he didn't know anybody, except in the lab, where he was, he was thoroughly respected. He told me that himself. Oh, Edwin was... He lives for his work, he does. <laughs> when you phoned him last night at the lab, what time was it? 
quarter to nine. Television went off, no sounds, no zigzags. And I, I rang Edwin so as not to miss the news. But uh, I did, of course. <laughs> can you remember what he said? Yes, of course I can. He said he'd tell the rental people first thing in the morning. But he hadn't. He didn't even come home, did he? Still broken. Oh, I... They say that comes all times, they never do. Did he say anything about expecting a visitor at the lab last night? No, no. But then, uh, well, he seemed to be in a hurry. He was never, never a great one for chatting on the telephone. You rang him earlier in the day, didn't you? In the morning? Yes, well, so I was supposed to go into hospital. Out of Bruce. Yesterday afternoon, he was going to... He was going to drive me in. See, it's, it's this leg. Psoriasis. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Just, uh, uh, that's see? all right. Well, Miss Easterbrook, she answered and she said she'd tell Edwin there wasn't a bed for me after all. So I'm, just, I'm supposed to be going in this coming Tuesday. Who's going to take, who's going to take me? Well, I expect Mrs. Swaffield would deal with it. Oh, no, that woman, she talks too fast, that woman. Your niece, Miss Foley? Yes, that one, she came here. And, uh, and a friend, too. Dr. Howard? No, no, Miss... Miss Mawson, the writing woman. Friend. <laughs> yes, Edmund didn't like either of them. Well, she went rummaging upstairs. Now, I've... I've good ears, but if she went into the bathroom, I didn't hear it pull the chain. And who goes to the lab wearing washing up gloves anyway? Hey? Hey? <laughs> where was Constable Davis? Who? Oh, I don't know. I don't know where he was, was I? Who? Oh. Did your son get many phone calls here at home? No, only when the police lays on chaplings up to say he's wanted. That's a crime. That can be in the middle of the night, but Edwin never wakes me up because he's got a, an extension in his room. No, he just leaves a note. And usually he's back here to give me a cup of tea around about seven. That's why I rang the lab this morning. No tea. Has anyone phoned him recently? Or come to see him? Oh, we'd want to come and see him. No, we keep ourselves to ourselves, we do. Nobody phoned except that woman. Mom! Oh, last Monday week, Edwin was having a bath, so I answered the phone. I don't know who it was. And you remember what she said? Excuse me, sir. I'm sorry to interrupt. Later. You. He's only a boy. Eh? No sense at all. Well, she started straight away. Oh, well, it didn't give me time to say anything. Not even the telephone number, 2059. And then she said, uh, well, right. You're right, there is something going on. That's what she said. Yeah. yeah, and then she said something about all oh, can being burned. And then and, and, and she... Sorry? She I'm got sorry. the numbers, what? The can being burned? No, I know it sounds silly now, but that's what she said. And then she, uh, she rattled off these numbers very quickly. Difficult to remember them? Oh, no. Well, I remember the... The last one, no, not the last one, 1840. Of course, the very first house my Mary and I got was number 18, and the next house we got was number 40. That was in, in Lynn. Lynn. No, I don't remember, I don't remember the other numbers. They, they didn't ring a bell, sorry. How many numbers altogether? There were two numbers, and then the 
18 and the 40. How did they strike you? Um, like a car registration number, for example? No, no, it's more, it's more like a telephone number than a car, because there weren't any letters. Uh, or could be a date. 1840. Did you get any impression of what the woman was like? Oh, well, she certainly wasn't from the lab, anyway. No. How did the voice sound? Exciting. <sighs> you know, conspiratorial. It was just... Secret. That's what she sounded like. Full of a secret. Oh. I don't know. It's hard when the young go first. Mr. Lorimer? What? We need to look in your son's room, examine his papers, that sort of thing. Is the room locked? Well, why should it be locked? Well, no one goes in there only, I mean. Miss Mawson today. But, uh, I mean, who's going to look after me? <laughs> well, I know, I've got the pension, and I, I suppose he leave me a bit in his will, but it's not the same. No, it was company. Thank you. Constable Davis. Hmm? Said it was Guy's Marsh wanting to speak to you. Yes. Luckily for us, the old man was in more control than we had any right to expect. Yes. The question is if he was correct. And Senator Mawson did come up here. What did she want? And more importantly, did she find it? The will. Perhaps her friends stood to benefit. Possibly. You know, it's not easy to search for something that's already been taken. It could be conspicuous by its absence, sir. Yes. When you interviewed Angela Foley, how did she strike you? She seemed totally disinterested in anything to do with Lorimer. Uninterested, John. Pardon? Unin... Lorimer's will. Check it. Oh. See if Angela Foley was to be a beneficiary. Well, he leaves the cottage and £10,000 to his father. Sir, he leaves the rest of his estate to Angela Foley. What's the date of the will? 15th of August, 1977. That was my wife's birthday. Yes, sir. <laughs> right, well, we have a will. Now, I know this is a long shot. I just wonder if Stella Mawson was looking for that letter Brenda Pridmore referred to in her statement. Uh, in your notebook. It was an anonymous letter with a brown envelope. Oh, yes. Addressed in clumsy capitals, arriving at Hoggart's, the second post, the day before Lorimer was found. Anonymous letter. Before the phone call to Lorimer, Tell him about the can being burned. Old Lorimer just na referred just now to the can being burned or not burned. Can is short for cannabis. The number, um. Batch, exhibit number? A valuable exhibit not officially burnt at Hoggart's. An anonymous letter to Lorimer for the phone call to him to tell him about some cannabis. Yes. Anonymous letter. Right, get on to Hoggart's guys must see if there was a exhibit number 1840. While you're at it, check that. Miss Willard, the old rectory, 2437. Oh, John, have you got Lorimer's keys? Yes, sir. Thank you.
Margie and Inspector. What? I'll take you downstairs then. I'm sorry, Inspector, sorry. but uh, I've got to go back to the village and to see that my husband's all right too. So I wondered if I might take the old gentleman with me, just for the outing, you know, so he doesn't boot. Does he want to go? Oh, I think so. Doing good. I can always say that he ought to pop into the post office to collect his pension. They like that sort of thing, I find. Yes, of course, Mrs. Waffield. Please do. Huh? Thank you. Just thought I ought to ask first. How did you find him? Oh, oh uh, very helpful. Oh, poor man. Well, I mustn't keep you from your search, must I? Thank you. I've got Sergeant Reynolds started on it, sir. Not Doyle. No, he's still working on middle, Mrs. Evidence. He's only taking his time, isn't he? Yes. Also the duty officer at Guy's Marks. We're on to something. Look, this this is They're from Lorimer to Dominica Howarth. So far there's not a reply from her. Well, they've all been sent and returned, or not sent at all, haven't they? Mm. This one implies an affair broken off. Yes, they will do. Okay, what do you think? I think we should interview Miss Howarth as soon as possible. Yeah. Seems as though we got the wrong body, didn't it? Hmm? I mean, all the evidence points to Lorimer being the murderer, not the victim. Hmm. Sir? Do you think Dr. Howarth knew of his sister's affair? Yes. He didn't tell us, though, did he? No, he didn't. I wonder if anyone else in the lab knew about it. Well, if Mrs. Bidwell had had any inkling, I'm sure we'd have heard. What's that? I'm almost certain it's the key to the chapel Dr. Howarth was talking about. The question is, what was he doing here in this locked drawer in Lorimer's desk? Hello. One second. He's a uh, guy's marsh. Thank you. Dalglish? Yes, well, Constable Davis told me. Oh, I see. Well, I apologise. Yes. Yes, thank you. We'll be straight there. Well, we can cancel all theories. We have got a witness. Who? A passenger. The nine o'clock bus last night, as it was passing Hoggard's, saw someone running down the drive. So back to Earth. Sir. Daffly were down the drive. Can you describe him? No. Well, he weren't old. Well, how young was he? I never said he were young. Never seen him near to, did I? But he didn't run like an old un. Was he running for the bus? Well, if he were, he missed it. <laughs> he missed it. What's that on your wrist? Eel skin. Oh, is that for um, rheumatism? Ah, be worse without the old eel skin. Did he wave to attract the bus driver's attention? No, driver couldn't see him, but I could. No point in his waving at back of bloody bus. I hate them new dackle doubles. Have to go up top to smoke. Lucky for us, though, Mr. Goddard. Otherwise, you wouldn't have seen him. Wow. Excuse me, sir. We've got a major hunt on the line. I'd like to speak to you personally. Who's he? A solicitor, sir. Parge to Colby and Hunt. Well, tell him we're calling back then. He said it was urgent, sir. John. Was the bus on time? I ain't talking without a witness. You're not accused of anything. 
I'm helping with your inquiries, so let's do it proper, eh? Besides, if that young fella don't take notes, you forget as like as not, eh? Would you like to try me, Mr. Goddard? Well, here he is now. All right, John? Yes, sir. Well? Well, what? Was the bus on time? Bloody miracle. It war. Just after knowing. Just? Well, maybe ten minutes. All right, well, we can uh, check that with the bus stepper. You don't believe me, boy? Of course. You better. You need me more than I need you, eh? You're right. You've got us just where you wanted, haven't you? Well, this fella, we're middle and tall, we a shortish coat. Darkish. Mind you, I only see him for a second. You've got good eyesight. Tell me, did you notice if there were any lights on in the laboratory? You know, the house the man was running from? So these are the first details on Lorimer. Hunt is the story, so we'll call on her later. Mm. All right. Faint lights didn't blaze out from bottom windows. You sure? Of course I'm sure. Mm. Mr. Goddard, are you also sure it was a man you saw running? Oh, he's asking the questions, at least he were. Well, it's a good question, I am listening. You can't tell which from t'other these days. Time was folks dressed decent, feared God. Man or woman, it were human and it were running. That's all I see. It could have been a woman in jeans. No, daft runners women be. Knees tight together, ankles kicking out like bloody ducks. Pity they don't keep the knees together when they ain't running, I see. Ah, that's a lot of them. Oh, Is the bus driver still here, John? Yes, sir, down the corridor. Right. Excuse me, Mr. Goddard. Where's he going? That's spring, that's fair. Mm -hmm. What colour? Um, liver and brown. Liver that's brown. Brown, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You see, we've got two of them, and we were taking them out for exercise. Yeah. And we called them back, and only one of them... Why didn't I get invited to the party, Barry? Mm -hmm. And it's most unusual, because they're usually so very obese. Barry! Mm -hmm. Hold on, Tom. A dog or bitch? It's a dog, Tiger. Oh, come on, Barry. I heard it on the radio. Mm -hmm. So why wasn't I invited to the party, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look, how should I know? Ask the chief. As far as I'm concerned, you're on the Hoggett's case. Right? He's out there. At the lunch bed. Where else? Son of a hole. Inspector Dog. Uh, have you managed to check out Middle Mrs. Evans? Yes, because of your bloody case, mine's screwed right up. Um, one last question. The bus driver says there was a woman standing at the bus stop, but she uh, didn't get on the bus. I never seen her. Who could I? Can't expect a chap to see through the roof of bloody bus shelter. Oh, sure enough. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Goddard. Chew me up and spit me out, eh? Well, I thought you did miss the chewing, really. Leg pull, boy. Leg pull. Oh. Right, we'd better take a look at Mr. Biddle's statement. Yes, sir. What about the woman at the bus stop? Hello, John. Running man and the woman waiting could be connected. Pity the bus driver didn't see him all clearly. Head scarf, greenish coat. Not much to go on. No. Still, he was so keen to be helpful, he started remembering things he couldn't possibly have seen. Yes. Sir, have you supervised from the bus depot on the line? Oh. Um, take it on the other phone? Yeah, uh, John, would you do that? Hello, Inspector Massey. Do you have Mr. Bidwell's statement here? Oh, yes, sir. If I get him to sign, is he still in the building? Yes, sir. 
Sir, the bus was definitely on schedule. Outside Hogwarts at 9, 12 exactly. Mm. Superintendent Mercer still here? No, sir. Thank you very much. He's gone out to the clench pit. To the oh. body, sir. What body? I don't know, sir. It's probably to do with the case Inspector Dawes has been working on. Thank you. Just give me a couple of minutes, will you, John? And then Major Hunter Ely calls. I have a premonition of dusty files and sporting prints. Well, tell them I'm on my way anyway. Now, Angela. The rewrite can wait. Really, it can. I must do something. I've done nothing all day. You found your cousin Edwin had been murdered last night. You helped to break the news to your uncle. You've been interviewed by the police. I call that something, not nothing. Oh, please. Oh, damn. Angela. What? We must keep calm. I'm please. Tra I'm trying to keep calm. That's why I'm typing. By the way, did you tell the police that you'd asked Edwin to lend us the money? No. Oh, good. Well, he won't have had time to change his will. At least you'll get your due. <laughs> we can write to the solicitors. Of course, the... the police are going to think that gives you a motive. I know. Oh, what are we going to do? We make sure our alibis are watertight. They'll want to question me, too. You went out for a walk last night. No. No, it was like this. You came home from work. Stop. Now, you came home from work. I asked you how your day had been. We had a drink. You took the casserole out of the oven. We ate. I washed up. You typed a few pages. We watched the news. Went to bed early. Neither of us went out. We were together all evening. A simple, straightforward alibi. Yes? Star, where did you go? I didn't see Edwin Lorimer. Surely you believe me. Of course I do. Then no problem. Good afternoon. Or is it evening? Sorry to ask you to call so late in the day, Detective Chief Superintendent. And take a few. Both of you. Thank you. Well, <coughs> tragic business. I don't think we've ever lost a client by murder before. <coughs> uh, there was James Cummins, sir. Shot by his neighbour, Captain Cartwright, owing to the seduction of Mrs. Cartwright by Sir James. A grievance aggravated by some unpleasantness over fishing rights. Ah, oh, so Mitching, but that was at my father's time, 1923. Mm. They hanged Cartwright. Pity. He had a good war record. Then, of course, he cut up the body. English journalists hate that. He did cut up the body, didn't he, Mitchell? Uh, correct, sir. Yeah. Buried the head in the orchard. But for that, the jury would probably have made a recommendation to Mercy. Trent. No, thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, of course not. Now, oh, well, I'll hold off, too. It'll do me good. Well, to our muttons, gentlemen. You'll want to know about Dr. Rodham's will, I dare say. I want to know why you thought it urgent for us to call, Major Hunt. Ah, yes. Well, it's the, uh, the timings, you see. Uh, yes, uh, Mitchin, get me Lorimer's box. It's here, sir. What? Oh, yes. Now then, the will. Yes, well, we found one in his study. It looked like the original, dated August 15th, 1977. Yes, the poor devil probably didn't have a chance to destroy it. There's a later one? Oh, yeah. As of yesterday. About this time, actually. Well, uh, no, 5.30. She was a bit late. Yesterday. Yeah, signed by him in my presence. Copy and the original to be left here under his instructions. They're quite short. One each. Ah, okay. 
His father gets the cottage and 15,000. How much does his cousin, Miss Foley, receive? Ah, spot on, Chief Superintendent. Damn all. Nothing? Not a sausage. Oh, I tried to dissuade him, but his mood yesterday was rather hectic and, well, uh, vengeful. Anyway, those were his instructions to me. Quite adamant he was. Why did you try and dissuade him? Well, she's had rather a raw deal, really, that girl. Unlike Brenda Pridmore, who receives £1,000 to enable her to buy books needed to further her scientific education. Yes. Generous allowance, but we'll come back to Brenda Pridmore in a moment. You were saying... Dr. Lorimer's money came originally from his maternal grandmother. According to what is laughingly known as natural justice, there should have been two beneficiaries, both grandchildren, Edwin and Angela, but the old lady was a bit potty, and she left a lot to the male grandchild. How much? Oh, thirty-odd thousand, since compounded to fifty-five thousand. Dr. Lorimer's left all the residue to the Academy of Forensic Science. Not a fortune these days, but... Why was the original sum left to the grandchildren? Were her own children dead? Oh, yes. A uh, stroke and a road accident, respectively. Uh -huh. Did Dr. Lorimer indicate to you why he changed his mind? In the earlier will, Miss Foley was the main beneficiary. Oh, no, he gave no reason. Did he say or imply he'd already told Miss Foley she was not a benefit? Uh, no, he didn't say whether he had told her or not. But he didn't approve of Miss Mawson. Quite outspoken he was about the uh, relationship which he alleged exists between his cousin and Miss Mawson. But, getting back to the timings... Yes. Oh, blast. Make sure you deal with that, will you? Major Hunt's office. Oh, good afternoon. You were talking about timings? Yes, well, given his murder last night, Miss Foley, if she had known of his intention... Quite a strong motive, Major Hunt. Exactly. <clears throat> it's Miss Foley herself. She's at Personnel Cottage. Oh, Mr. Larimer wants to know, he's rather anxious, whether the cottage now belongs to him. Oh, do you want me to tell her? Oh, that's for you to decide, Major Hunt. He is the next of kin. He may as well know now as later. And the same goes for Miss Foley, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, I thought you'd want to uh, spring it on her yourself. No. Oh. Either she knows already or she doesn't. And if she does, she'd be a fool not to show surprise. Goodbye, Major Hunt. Thank you. Not at all. Pleasure. Uh, uh, Mitching, see the Chief Superintendent up. Yes. <clears throat> Hello, Miss Foley. Well, the local gossips will have a field day when they learn of Brenda Pridmore's inheritance. Yes, you're right. To the mean-minded, all things are meanly given. Yes. I shall insist. No judge would allow it. Rubbish. The woman invariably gets custody of the children. I can't believe that you really want them. You don't know anything about me anymore, Henry. Really? Are you so different? Yes, I am. Leaving you has made all the difference. And Gerald, too, of course. You aren't going to contest the divorce suddenly, are you? We agree. No, but I shall fight for the children. You? Fight? You better go now before they get back with Miss Willard. Oh, I want to see them. Nell's emotional enough as it is, and you always upset her. Gerald's solicitor tells Yes, me. will you discuss it with him? Now go. What's this housekeeper like that you've got? Barely adequate, but we manage. Poor you. You should break out, Henry. Like I did. I recommend it.
come on, come on. My wife used to drive as impatiently as that. They'll move over in a minute. So, between the hours of nine and ten o'clock, in August, there was a man running down the drive. There was a woman waiting at the bus stop. There was a car park there. And all the lights were on the ground floor of the building. Are these events all connected or are they separate? The same thing with the two phone calls. Mm -hmm. well, one to Mrs. Bidwell, delaying her arrival at the lab. The other, an urgent message to old Lorimer saying something about burning of a cannabis exhibit. What else we got? There's Miss Mawson's visit to Lorimer's room. Mm -hmm. There's vomit in the uh, wash basin at Hoggart. And uh, there's the one person with a clear cut motive Angela Foley. I wonder if she actually knew about the change in the will. Thank God. I hope Kerrison's out there. And something else. We need to find out a bit more about his daughter. Hmm? And the quarrel she had with Lorimer. Yes.